New Year's resolutions. Those are big and they tend to fall apart really, really quickly. I know it's happened to me. I know it's happened to you. And the biggest area it falls apart in is the area of exercise. Most people jump in the gym, they go in, they hurt themselves, or they get bored. And by February, they're back at McDonald's and uh, not working out anymore. I'm Dr. Jason Alvian. This is Structurally Sound. All right, we got a special guest here today that's going to be able to keep you on track no matter what time of the year you pick that New Year's resolution to be, even if it's halfway through the year. Uh, we've got Mike Petrarca with us here. He um, does uh, a lot of work in the area in South Florida, but he's also been all over the country. He's worked with a bunch of different sports teams, and uh, he is an athletic trainer. He's certified in the state of Florida. Now, certified athletic trainer is a, a little bit different than a personal trainer. So welcome, Michael. Hi, Jason. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm doing very well. Uh, so, Michael, you are an athletic trainer or an ATC. What is that? Yeah, so an athletic trainer is an allied health professional. We're licensed medical practitioners in the state of Florida. We do anything from soft tissue mobilization to corrective exercises to setting up a, a strength conditioning program, as well as uh, athletic game coverages such as soccer, tennis, baseball, et cetera. Okay, so I mean, you just uh, threw out some uh, words there that I understand. Um, how do you explain some of this to somebody that really has no background in exercise? What does an athletic trainer do for them? It sounds like they can only work with you if they're going to be playing a sport. Well, I, a lot of this can be used when they're, they're hurt. So as an athletic trainer, I have a vast knowledge in uh, structural uh, components of joints, uh, muscles, tendons, ligaments, et cetera. Um, I know the way the body moves and can uh, you know, take that information and design a program that can benefit the person I'm working with, especially if they have like low back pain or knee pain or ankle pain. I can design the program to best suit them and help improve those aspects of their body. All right. So like an improvement and injuries are, are seems like something that you can work well with. Uh, now there's seems there's a lot of people out there that train people, personal trainers, and, um, and uh, they help people get their bodies moving or looking the way they want. Uh, and you're an athletic trainer and you just said some of the things that they might do. Where do you, where do you differ? What makes you so much better than a personal trainer? You know, I think, I wouldn't say better. I think I have a little bit more well-rounded um, knowledge of the human body. Um, I have uh, a background of four years of undergraduate plus two years of grad school. I needed to pass an exam to be allow myself to treat athletes as well as uh, just everyday people uh, for their injuries. So I can understand somebody comes in and says, listen, my knee's bothering me, um, but I still want to squat. So I can make adjustments to that person and, the, and their program so that we can get them to move better, but also not limit them and what their, what their goals or what they want to achieve. Okay. So uh, you're helping somebody function better with something that right. they may already be doing or something that they want to do. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot, a lot of people that I've dealt with when I first started this profession were athletes and they, they had desires and needs and wants to play their sport. So, and they're not always healthy. Like, as we all know, most of these athletes are injured or have something they're dealing with throughout the year and they still have to perform at a higher level. So that's where I differ from the personal trainer. I'm trying to get them from feeling uh, or even stopping them from getting hurt. And if they are hurt, getting them back to where they were all performing at a high level. It could be anywhere from a weekend warrior who you know, rides their bike uh, for long distances or a swimmer or something like that, or it could be something that, you know, a high end athlete that's looking to prepare for their season. All right. So uh, when I, I look at this here and I'm hearing some of the things that you're saying and in the field I'm in, um, Physical therapy sounds similar to this. Where, where are you different from physical therapy um, as well? It's uh, you're working with the body, helping them perform. You're talking about injuries. 
like I think I think I think I'm a little bit of that physical therapy, a little bit of that that personal training, that combination, that mesh. I like I bridge the gap from that from the table to the gym or table to the field, right? And that or I'm on the field, I'm helping and assessing or taping an ankle or let's say stretching a joint or giving the person some exercises prior to their, their physical activity to get them prepared to, you know, perform at a high level. I'm um, just like, uh, I would say almost like, you know, kind of like a renaissance man in that aspect. Like I've got a combination of a few things underneath my belt. Like I have a bunch of tools in my toolkit. Okay. Uh, and, and the name of your business, uh, Medicine Recovery Performance, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's Correct. right. Oh, I want to make sure we have that out it's there. A little, it's a little, long, it's a little long-winded. I'm trying so to make we're, we're a, at that, that word, that word medicine. What, what do you mean by medicine yeah. when you put that into your title for your business? You know, I, I think medicine, uh, really, that's the, you know, the backbone of what an athletic trainer was. Like, I, I chose to get into sports medicine. So, like sports medicine, sports recovery, sports performance. Um, you know, sports medicine is, you know, when you get hurt playing a sport or get hurt at, dur during an activity, even if your sport is, let's say, pickleball or whatever, um, or your sports baseball, uh, I'm the, that medical forefront, that person that you see first when you get hurt. I've got a vast uh, array of like people that are underneath me, such as yourself, Jason, that I can refer to for chiropractic care. And then I've also worked with um, uh, an orthopedic surgeon in the area to refer out to him. And we kind of work together and create like a medical um, uh, canopies for that individual. So it's all encompassing full, full, uh, full care. Okay. Um, let's say um, you have a client that comes in that really isn't an athlete. They're not playing sports. Do you take them or do you refer them out? Um, it, I mean, everyone has some sort, some sort of goal in their product, whether it's to move better, whether it, whether it's to feel um, better while they play with their kids. Uh, a sport, I don't want to necessarily put it into a, um, a niche. A sport can be whatever you like to do activity-wise. Maybe you like to walk around your, your, um, your neighborhood with your dog or ride your bike. I mean, that right there is something that you, you want to get back to doing, I think. Sports gets kind of, you know, kind of like pushed into a certain direction. But a sport is just something that, I, I, from what I believe in, is something that you like to do to stay active. Um, if you're going to be somebody that doesn't really want to work out, doesn't want to do exercise, because you never did it, maybe I can change your mind. But if you're not going to be doing exercise, you don't really like to move, you don't want to do that sort of stuff, you kind of want to just do some soft tissue work, et cetera, um, you're probably not my probably not great for me and I can refer some out to somebody else. Okay. If you just want a massage, a massage therapist, but I love, I mean, I really want to get <laughs> the person moving. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So uh, athletic trainer, it's more like you're an activity trainer um, from when you can, we help people instead of just, just athletics. Right. When people think of that, it's like, Oh, I can only see you if I play baseball or if I play tennis. Right. But if there's an act, Activity that you like to do and you lose it and you want to get back to it, it seems like you're able to help them. Right, exactly. That's, you know, not everyone plays baseball, not everyone plays at, you know, high level athletics, but a lot of people just like to remain active. Um, they like to just do whatever it is that makes them happy and then gets them moving. So, Sorry, uh, come, come I'm going to bring a, this up because you, you keep saying baseball, baseball, baseball. Yeah. So, I'm going to bring okay, up, yeah. I, I want you to tell us about your career with some of the major league sports teams and for those people out there he does have a world series ring yep <laughs> correct tell us about your time yes, with that. uh so i was with the st louis cardinals for six years prior to that i was in the mets as an intern um in their uh, uh their preseason i'm sorry their uh spring training facility in Fort St. Louis. But the six years I spent with the St. Louis Cardinals, I was all around. I spent two years and I had three different stops. So two years in Johnson City, two years in Batavia, New York, and two years in Peoria, Illinois as a minor league athletic trainer. So basically I was the I was a medical person in charge of all the athletes that were underneath my care. So we'd go on road trips. This guy has the sniffles, he comes to see me. 
the guy hurts his ankle, he comes and sees me. So that's kind of what, you know, as an athlete trainer on the road in the minor leagues is like, you're away from your family and friends for six months plus, depends if you go to the playoffs. Um, and you're the guy, you're the man, you're the, you're the, you're the point man as far as for, for the medical aspect. You know, what's really cool about some of the things that you just said there. Uh, you and I met a few years back in Boca Raton, Florida. And mm -hmm. he said, and you said that you worked at the Mets spring training. And I used mm -hmm. to live walking distance from that training center. Literally, I'd oh, go out yeah. running. Yeah. I was right by the Mets. Center. And I got my chiropractic degree in St. Louis. And you worked yeah, at the Cardinals. So you and I fun. kind of followed each other around without knowing it. Right. And then we go and meet in Boca Raton. And here we are working right, with weird. together. Uh, helping people use their body the way they want. This is so cool. Right. So it, studies for this, uh, you were saying you have to do an undergrad um, bachelor's yep. degree, uh, and then you Sorry. did uh, two years of a, a master's degree. Uh, where, what point is the athletic trainer? What degree do you have to get to become an athletic trainer? Uh, it's a master's, in, I'm sorry, it's a uh, bachelor's in science. So it's a four-year program, entry level, you get into you do a bunch of prerequisites and see if you can get into the program it's a very competitive highly competitive program not ever, not for it's not for everyone so it kind of weeds out people that want to be in it or unsure it's it's pretty intense the first year or so to get into the program once you're accepted then you do three years of more focused uh, curriculum and then you end up working with some teams at, at, at the college. So at the University of Hampshire, I worked with everywhere from women's lacrosse. I did football, track. I even got a little bit of hockey in there. Um, so I did a, a wide array of um, hours. So I had over a thousand hours. So football was a big one that really kind of springboarded me through my, my curriculum, my program. Um, and then I just, I chose to do a graduate program. I didn't have to do it. I chose to do it because I wanted to kind of get a little bit more, um, experience under my belt. Plus it was a good way to get my master's degree for free. I was a graduate <laughs> assistant <laughs> working my tail, <clears throat> working my tail off with the baseball team. That's kind of yeah. how I, I played that, baseball. It, it wasn't up. free. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was my, my but I, I didn't have to pay for it monetarily. Yes, <laughs> yes, hey, but you worked right. for it. Kind of money. Yes, I worked for it. Yes. All right. Uh, let, yeah. Let's say I, I decide um, to come to you as a client. What's the first mm -hmm. day coming to you going to look like? What, what can somebody expect? Oh, we're going to uh, sit down, talk about your goals, um, kind of see what's going on with you, see if you've got pain, see if you've got. When I find out history, you had surgeries, you had issues, and that's probably, you probably see because you're having something going on and you want to get better. Um, but I'm going to just kind of go over your history. Maybe there's a few things that you wouldn't even think that are affecting what's going on right now happened in your past, such as surgery for your knee, could be affecting your hip or your low back, et cetera. So I'm just going to really go do a deep dive into your, your medical history and your activity uh, in the past. And, uh, after that, we're going to do a movement screen to kind of see where our dynamic stability wise. We'll do some squatting and kind of see how your you know see if your hips are stable, and, and we're going to do some upper body movements as well, uh, just to kind of see your strength overall strength gains and see how you move. Okay, so you're doing the the history, you're doing an assessment, and then you said a dynamic screen. Right. What is what does dynamic mean? Then there's movement incorporated with um, some, some stability. So let, I mean, there's six moves that I like to do. They're a little intricate. So I, you know, when I, when I go over with you and I explain it, but there's a six moves that I think I can find out kind of how you move. And if you've got some instability issues in certain directions and certain planes, um, of your movement patterns. So I just do a, a thorough assessment. And from there, I can take that and design a program. If we've got enough time, we can maybe do some, push, pull, upper body, uh, hinge at the waist, and, and kind of see if you can load your, your movement patterns as well. But after that first day, then we really start kicking the gear. I add some corrective exercises to try to address any of the um, deficiencies I see or the pain that you're experiencing, um, and then try to you know, improve your strength and your performance through that program. 
Okay, so a, a corrective exercise. So they're, they're, they're doing movements, they're doing exercise. And when you say corrective, what is it looking at correcting? Uh, it could be a, a vast array of things, right? You have some, uh, a, lot of, a lot of low back pain, you have a lot of hip instability, poor, con poor control of your low back essentially. We can do anything from a single leg bridge to just a bridge hold and see how long you can hold it there. Some isometric work. Uh, isometrics like when you have long duration, long hold, um, and just kind of see how you stabilize that, that joint itself. Uh, most of the corrective exercises involve, you know, bands or some, uh, some perturbation of pushing uh, or an unstable surface to kind of engage some of the smaller muscles that uh, are relying on it. All right. So uh, you get anybody standing on one leg for a period of time? Yeah, try to. Some people can, some people really can, but some people, this, it's, a, it's a challenge. They don't even realize it. And they're like, oh my goodness, my balance is not very good. And, then, and you've been playing tennis and your balance is not very good. So think about what that's doing to your, your knee or your hip. All right. Um, so you, how, how long have you been working with people in uh, the South Florida area? Since 2016. Okay. I mean, it was baseball. So yeah. So, it's been, so we got so we got about what? five years of you working mm -hmm. with people. Uh, you can then let us know. Do you have any specific uh, memory of a client that you had that you were able to take from point A to point B, and what it was like for them? How long was the journey? What was the dysfunction? What did you get them back to doing? I mean, we all have those stories that. There's right. that client that followed everything we needed to do and you watched it happen for him. Yeah, I had a client, uh, she came into me and she was having bad low back pain, uh, piriformis was on fire. She was struggling, like her weakness in her legs, getting up and down stairs, like she had to use her railing to go up and down the stairs. Wait, wait a second, you, she, you said, you, she was young. You said piriformis on fire for... Uh, if yeah, I was a lay like person, was what, like what, what, what are you, what are you right. talking about? Oh, okay. What's a piriformis? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I know everyone's, so yeah, pain, typically it's a pain in your, pain your butt pretty much, right? So it's, okay. one, it's, a, it's a, it's a muscle that uh, tends to get super tight when we have poor lumbo, pelvic, or low back control. Um, so she was having real issues with that. And she had a tough time even getting up and down stairs. Sometimes sleeping at night because that would be it would hurt her. She'd feel like there's some a little bit of shooting down her leg, um, and and her it's just basically a pain in the butt. And like she couldn't do like normal daily activities. She couldn't play tennis like she used to. She couldn't play golf like she used to. Um, and this is after post surgery, so she was like, it's nothing's getting better. Um, and she's and she was young, right? She was an active active woman beforehand. She wanted to maintain that. So I, I took her from that inability to move to getting her to now she deadlifts 195 pounds. <laughs> and she can kettlebell swing and she plays tennis and she plays golf and she walks up and down her stairs and take, you know, stuff that you would just take for granted. She walks up and down her stairs without any pain and stands on her feet and cooks for you know a couple hours and doesn't have to sit down and and her quality of life is just vastly improved. Okay. It's a, it's a it's a pretty cool story. Like, and she's she's been my client for going on three plus years now. So I'm still working her okay, out right so, now. So so you're saying three plus years? Um, but I heard you also talking about I mean, the, the the pain right. that she was getting. Um, she, the pain didn't just go away if it's been three plus years. How right. long did it take before she started noticing that that improvement? I mean, I would say within. A while ago, but I would say within two months she started like, oh, okay. I mean, she, I mean, you, she start to see little incremental things. Within two months, she's like, oh wow, I'm going up and down my stairs, no problem. Um, I can actually go, pen, I can stay in my kitchen and cook and stand on my feet for you know, an hour and not to worry about having to sit down or feeling exhausted, my legs and tired. So, and it was, it was a pretty amazing thing. Yeah, it's great when you get to, to use your body, but I mean, this, this pain goes away in two months. And then you said she's been with you for three years. Uh, why yeah. do people stay? What's the, if, if the pain was gone after two months, why isn't she done? What yeah. is it that you do differently? I, I think, you know, the connection, like we, I mean, we had a very good, you know, back and forth 
Uh, I think a lot of it's, you know, if you like the person, you just want to spend time with them and you're friendly and, and, and also you challenge them too. You're like keep pushing them, pushing them, pushing them in a good way. You got to kind of feel out everybody and, and everyone gets motivated a different way. I think, you know, her motivation is to remain healthy, to be able to play golf and, and play tennis and, and, and do the things she, she wants. I think she has a, a good idea of, you know, what my goals for her are. And I've told her, I'm like, listen, if you want to continue to do this stuff, we have to stay on it. Like we have to continue. We stop moving, we stop working out, we stop progressing. Even if we do take a step back for a week and do some easy stuff, it's not all go, 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 go. But at points in time, you have to push and, 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 and to create progress, you have to challenge that person and find, their, find what motivates them. Right. So, yeah, it's, it sounds like uh, this is something that once you get to where you want to go, you have to continue to either maintain it uh, unless you have some mm-hmm. other improvement you're trying to get. So if she was, right. uh, she was yeah. fe- feeling a lot better in two months. Um, how much more did she progress after she got rid of the discomfort? I mean, it was, it took off from there. She was starting <laughs> to do kettlebell swings. She was like walking lunges, sled pushes, <laughs> med ball slams, like, you name it, she's done it. And like, I just say, hey, all right, let's do this. And she's like, she has the confidence that she can accomplish that. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm assuming now she can stand on one leg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she hates every time I tell her to do it. <laughs> I'm like, all right. All right, now take this kettlebell and stand on one leg on this Airx pad, this unbalanced surface. She's like, wow, really? Yep. Good luck. <laughs> do, do you have an, another story that when you first pers- took the person in, um, you weren't sure if you were going to be able to help them, but you're going to give it your best go. And then all of a sudden you saw improvements and they saw improvements. Yeah. I think, you know, when you get into the, uh, to the older population, right. It's a little bit uh, more, it's a little trickier, right. You have to kind of be a little more cautious and be aware of what they're doing because they're, they they want to remain active, but you can't push them forward. So I had you know I had a, another woman as well. She came in and she plays t- uh, uh, golf, excuse me, avidly. And um, you know I was she was having knee and, and hip pain while she was doing it. And eventually I got her to feel better while she's playing. She played 18 holes and not feel like she got ran over by a truck. And so I think those type of things. Oh, they're, they're small, right? I'm not going to have her to take, it, but I can get her to do like a light sled push or a walking lunge, no weight, or a step up. But she couldn't do that because she's had knee pain prior to it. Now I get her to do some that's a little slower process. Um, but then also you have the younger population too, which um, the, the subcute best is like 14, 15 they're a work in progress too because they're trying to figure out their bodies um i've got a, I've got a kid as well all of a sudden he couldn't do a push-up off a wall now he's doing a push-up off the bench that right there is progress but we've been going at it for going on five months so that right there is those two dynamics of older and younger population you know it's kind of one of those things you have to be super patient with it now, anybody that uh, that you work with, you ever see them? Uh, what seems like they're going the wrong direction, but you know they're actually making progress. Yeah, it's just like a like soreness. They feel like a little bit. Um, uh, I must say, can't move as. I mean, like mobility wise, but they just, like they're dealing with a lot of like uh, hip or knee muscular soreness or low back soreness. It means they're using the, the muscles they haven't used in a while. Um, they that they think it's backwards because they're not doing as much because they're, they're feeling sore, but after you get through that stuff and make them recover, we can kind of take, they kind of take off from there. Sometimes you got to take a step back, especially if they come in with a flared up knee or, or a ankle. Yeah, that's a, sounds, uh, Sounds interesting getting these uh, people back to using their bodies. So with your, your, your business and somebody coming in to see you, 
when you prescribe something for them, what's the typical prescription length? How long are they seeing you from one assessment to the next? And then um, how do you set goals with them? Uh, you know, it varies. You know, there's a, you know, obviously there's a time constraint with some of the, the, the professional people and um, also monetary constraints as well. Uh, I try to discuss with them what, you know, their budget and how much time they have on their hands. I typically like to see somebody when I first get my hands in them and see them at least two times a week. Whether that's Tuesday, Thursday, whether that's um, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Friday, whatever it is, at least two. Um, once we get through, especially if it's like a, a acute injury, once you get through the inflammatory phase and start to get to, you know, start to regenerate some of the soft tissue, um, we can push it to once a week, but if it's once a week, I like to see them for at least an hour. If it's more frequently throughout the week, half hour, 45 minutes. Um, and in the beginning, I guess spend a little more time. But we end up, it ends up, you know, you go down one path and they take another. It could just easily happen in one session. Okay, I see like this is, you know, everything is kind of a work in progress. There's nothing like clear cut and dry. Everyone's built different. And you find stuff as people move and you get them on their feet that you have to kind of change your directions and go, go a different way. Um, you know, it's not, there, there's no like, I would love to see that everyone three days a week, but it's it's impossible to do that. So you try to put together a, a plan that's going to best suit them um, on all right. aspects, but also right. make sure that it's not a failing a failing plan. Correct. Also, and and then give them home exercise because they have to do stuff outside of seeing. Because I don't have let's say I only got two hours and two hours a week with you. What's going on the rest of that time, right? So they need to be accountable. So I, I, get, I do send them in a home exercise program along with, you know, when they come see me, so I'll email it to them with exercises um, and there's explanations and rep set schemes and how often I want them to do it per week. So, so their program could be something that they have to do every day, even if they're only meeting with you once or twice a week. Correct. Yeah, oh, okay. Correct. 100%. Uh, yeah, they could, I mean, they, it could be simple exercises. Like I try to give, you know, these exercises that don't, require a lot of equipment when they see me then we push the envelope a little bit and we kind of we get them under a bar for if need be or we give them some of the equipment and all the stuff that i have here at my disposal you know that's something that you know, that i try to do so i understand that, that no one has another one has a rack or a barbell or a kettlebell at their house so i have to kind of make an adjustments that way but for the most part simple exercises can make a huge difference Okay. Sim uh, if, I like simple done, exercises, simple. but they have to be done, yeah. right? Right. They have to be done. Yeah. They have to spend <laughs> the 15 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day and get that into the All right. So that, um, that's when we take off. Excuse me. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, now, do you have a website for your business? Yes. It's um, medicine-recovery-performance.com. All right. And what is is a, a cost for an evaluation with you? It's one hundred eighty dollars. It's an hour and fifteen plus. You get your home exercise program, so we get that in an, in an email that day or the following day. So um, that combination um, is one hundred eighty dollars. And then uh, one one hour sessions are one hundred and twenty. If you buy packages, they are um, they're discounted. Okay. Uh, now, now, when you say you do, you do the assessment with them that, that first day and get everything down and then send them a, a home exercise program, uh, are you making the recommendations right after you do the assessment with them or do you bring them back in? How does, how does that work? Uh, with the home exercise program, I usually go over a few of the exercises with them before they go home so they understand and, and they know how to do it. And then I send them home with that with that program, um, and then I want to get them in and follow up. Uh, you know, depending on the day of the week, I'd like to see to see them again within a five day period. Typically, that way we can get the ball rolling. Now I know everybody's different um, <clears throat> as far as the home exercises you need to give them, but would you say mm -hmm. that you have maybe like five to ten that you commonly use with almost everybody? 
or is that? Yeah, yeah. I'd say there's a there's a, a few that, that overlap each other for sure. You know, simple ones such as a bike or the bicycle with the bands, um, ridges, loop ridges, super easy. Right, don't need much to do those. Um, a lot of core stuff is is kind of what I do because it, it doesn't require a whole lot of. Um, now, are you going to have like um, on your website with uh, these clients, are you going to have like a member section that they could log into? Um, and then it's like, okay, I gave you these exercises and then they could go and watch videos of you doing them so they could follow along and make sure that they're doing them right. I'm going to write that down because I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> I guess you're not <laughs> doing that yet. <laughs> no, no. no, no, no. I, I, I just saw your eyes light up. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to teach them every time. It's already recorded. All right. How does so how does somebody get a hold of you should they want to book a concert? You can uh, email me. Yeah, you can email me at, at Mike at medicine recovery performance.com or you can call me on my cell, text me 603 978 1261. All right. And if anybody out there is listening to this and uh for whatever reason is unable to get a hold of Mike here, you can always uh, contact me and uh, I can make sure we get the information over to you. Uh, well, this was great. Do you have anything else uh, to add to, to your business? No, man, I appreciate you having me on today. Um, I like working with you and uh, it's, been, it's been fun. Yeah, and, and thank you. Thank you for having us. And again, this is uh, Dr. Jason Alvian with Structurally Sound. And I'd like to thank Mike Petrarca for joining us today. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of webmasterradio.fm's management or sponsors. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without authorized consent of webmasterradio.fm is prohibited.